Hey everybody, Antonio here, fresh from watching Verdi's Imasnadieri, which was shown at the Concerthaus am Gendarmenmarkt. And just like last year's production of Bellini's Beatrice di Tenda, this is another semi-stage version of the opera by the Berliner Operngruppe. And as always for this review, I have my little program here with me so that just in case I forget any names or screw up with pronunciation, I have this as my guide. The conductor was Felix Krieger. The chorus was the Chor der Berliner Operngruppe. The orchestra was by the Orchester der Berliner Operngruppe. The sonography was handled by Isabel Ostermann. And the chorus masters were Stefan Schubert and Johannes Wolf. Now, this is the first time I've seen this opera. I basically researched on this opera and found out that this was one of Verdi's operas that was based on a play by German playwright Friedrich Schiller called Die Räuber, or known in English as The Robbers. Now, this isn't really the only opera based on a Schiller play. We also have Louisa Miller and Don Carlo. Those are pretty much the two that come into my mind. And this opera is one of Verdi's most obscure works. I mean, it's rarely performed. I mean, the only continent that, it, that it's ever been performed is around Europe, most notably in Italy. But in North America, you probably would be very hard pressed to find a production of Imas Nadieri live on stage, only except if you go to the Glimmer Glass Opera House or any other opera house in North America that usually stages a lot of these rare productions from a lot of composers of the past. And another thing I noticed about this opera while watching it is that in the end, this was one of those operas in which the tenor kills the soprano. Now, this isn't really anything new for me. I've watched Verdi's Otello, and I also have a DVD of Leon Cavallo's I Pagliacci with Placido Domingo and Teresa Stratas. Basically, the whole thing about tenors killing sopranos at the end of the opera isn't really anything new for me, but it kind of shocks me because usually tenors and sopranos would end up being lovers until the day they die, or they would die together. And it's quite rare for a tenor at times to end up killing the soprano. I mean, we've seen that a lot, no doubt about that. But still, it was really a pleasure seeing Verdi's Imas Nadieri performed live on stage, even though this is a semi-stage production of the opera. And going into this production, the opera didn't start with an overture. Well, this production at least. But it started with the childhoods of Francesco, Carlo, and Amalia. We basically see young Amalia sitting on her father's lap with Arminio, their servant, uh, watching both Massimiliano and Amalia. In comes Carlo with his sword, or toy sword, and in comes Francesco. They play fight, and they almost try to kill each other by trying to, you know, punch each other and strangle each other. And then Amalia notices the commotion, and she calls her father's attention. Massimiliano scolds Francesco, and off goes um, Massimiliano, Frances Massimiliano, Carlo, and Amalia, and Francesco gets really, really jealous of both Carlo and Amalia, and he immediately resents Massimiliano. And then in the second half of the opera, we see another flashback of Carlos and Amalia's youth, where basically Carlo and Amalia are playing. Now, this certain semi-stage production is actually quite interesting because we really get to see of what really made Francesco the way he is as 
a person being all nasty and cruel and stuff. And we really get to see what made Carlo who he is as a person since he loves adventure and loves sword fights. Whereas with Amalia, she was basically quite sheltered by her father, even though both Carlo and Amalia basically, well, developed a certain feeling for each other until both Carlo and Amalia ended up being separated from each other's lives. But still, this semi-stage production of this opera was quite interesting, and it was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I noticed that the audience also laughed a bit in the flashback scenes, and I kind of chuckled a bit too, because it was quite adorable at times seeing younger versions of the three main characters, and I thought it was a lot of fun, and I definitely enjoyed the production values of this opera. And usually, in semi-stage versions of operas, the singers would usually wear their concert attire that usually um, accentuates with the character, like with Alfredo Daza as Francesco, he wore all black. And with um, Aurelia Florian, as Amalia, she wore like a golden gown and she had her hair done really beautifully and with the small role of Father Moser, we see him in priest's attire. So definitely this was really a fun semi-stage production to watch. Now the singers are definitely the most exciting part of the entire opera. And personally, I've been really excited to talk about them, so here I am talking about them now. Besides, there was a lot of top-tier singing that I've heard this very evening, starting with the leading tenor role of Carlo Moore. We have Mexican tenor Javier Cortez. Oh my goodness, I definitely loved his voice throughout the opera. It was a strong tenor voice. It was lyrical in some parts. It was dramatic in some parts. It had a lot of fire and passion and a lot of beauty. There were no moments that he was wobbling. It was a very well-focused instrument that really caught me on the edge of my seat. And his acting was also really good too. But more than anything, his huge, hugest asset was his voice. He can hit the high notes very beautifully. All of his high A's, B flats, B's, and C's were hit to perfection. They were all perfectly placed and were all beautifully sung, just like comets. And this is kind of the thing I have with a lot of Latino singers that I've heard, whether it's on YouTube or on live. That's why I really love singers, or in this case, tenors, like Marcelo Alvarez, um, Jose Cura, Ramon Vargas, Rolando Filazón, Juan Diego Flores, and most recently, Alvaro Zambrano. This is probably why I definitely love listening to all of these Latino American tenor voices because one thing I seem to notice is that there is a lot of fire and passion and They really have great diction They pronounce every word to perfection and their high notes are brilliantly sung That that's pretty much one thing that I noticed in common to a lot of the Latino tenors that I've heard singing, whether it's on YouTube or live. And definitely with Mr. Cortez's case, I definitely enjoyed his presence on stage and more than anything, his powerful, lyrical, yet dramatic voice. It was definitely great singing that I've heard from Mr. Cortez and I really hope to see more of him in the near future. And another great singer that I've heard live in this production of Imas Nadieri was Alfredo Daza, who is a Mexican baritone that I've heard 
a lot of, and I've basically heard him in passing ever since I was about 12 years old. And I noticed that he specialized in a lot of lyric baritone roles and a few select roles from the dramatic baritone repertoire, but mostly with lyric baritone roles. I was quite skeptical at first because, you know, with someone usually specializing in lyric baritone roles, he probably might have trouble singing a lot of the bigger dramatic baritone roles, but my skepticism definitely was blown out the window because his singing was absolutely fantastic. He had such a huge, powerful, demanding, commanding, and electrifying baritone voice. His high Fs and Gs were perfectly placed, and he had this rough-sounding, virile, masculine baritone voice that made him so wonderful, and everything was wonderfully sung, not to mention his stage presence. I could really see that type of venom that he puts out on stage, that type of uh, visceral um, venom, and that commanding stage presence, and that snarling and sneering type of presence that usually makes you feel uncomfortable yet in a very exciting way and I definitely felt that he was a very passionate performer. He really got into his character very well. Sure at times he may not be the most subtle but that can be blown out the window and that can be easily forgiven because I had great singing being heard by Mr. Daza, and that was absolutely fantastic. It was just magnificent hearing such a fantastic baritone like Alfredo Daza. I mean, sure, he had his beginnings as a lyric baritone, but his transition to the more dramatic baritone roles is really successful in my book, and he's got a lot of success singing in a lot of opera houses in North America, most notably in the USA like the Metropolitan and Los Angeles, and it's no secret why he is so well loved by the audience. His voice was definitely full of power and beauty and plus his acting was very commanding. Yet another favorite performer of mine that I've seen on stage, and pretty much that makes two of my most favorite performers from this production of Imas Nadieri, specifically Javier Cortez and Alfredo Daza. And then we have veteran basso Francesco Elero D'Artegna, singing the role of Count Massimiliano. I definitely love the color of his voice. It was a round, rich, virile, masculine, and paternal basso voice. And even though he's been singing for years and years and years and years on end, he still has it. It was still a beautiful instrument, and it was still a very commanding and exciting instrument that I've heard. Plus, his stage presence was really commanding. I do see a very dignified and very um, noble count, and definitely this was an experience that was absolutely amazing, simply seeing Mr. D'Artenia on stage. I mean, the, the first time that I've heard him was basically seeing him on YouTube perform the role of uh, Boitos Mephistofele, where he sang um, Son lo Spirito que nega. I definitely felt that his voice was really great in that clip, and hearing him live proved that, well, it was absolutely great. 
it was absolutely a huge pleasure listening to Mr. D'Artagnan do his thing in the role of the Count, and with his virile and masculine boss of voice, it was absolutely a huge treat. And then the only female role in this opera, we have Romanian soprano Aurelia Florian, who is very well known in a lot of uh, roles sung by coloratura sopranos and full lyric sopranos. I definitely felt that she was able to put her full lyric soprano voice that is very capable of coloratura to such great use. She was able to attack the coloratura very, very well and with such precision. And her high notes were sharp like daggers and knives. They were so piercing and so um, powerful. They were like comets shining down from the galaxy, of course. <laughs> it was definitely a lot of fun watching her on stage. And um, dramatically, she was able to con convey all of that youthfulness and all of that beauty that Amelia has as a character. And this was another audience favorite and my favorite also as well. She was definitely well praised by the audience just like her male colleagues and it really shows just how amazing of a, a, a performer um, Miss Florian is. And I definitely felt that I could really hear more of her. I definitely hope that I can hear more of Miss Florian in the near future. I've also read in her biography that she'll be singing La Traviata at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, but I've basically seen one production of La Traviata with Dinara Alieva. This time I really hope to see the tr production with Diana Damro in London, but Going to Miss Florian, I definitely really loved her voice. She was another great performer, and I really hope to see more of her in the near future. I mean, thanks to her full lyric soprano voice that's very capable of singing all of these dramatic coloratura parts, she was able to get the praise from the audience that she so highly deserved. And like I said, I wish her all the best. And then in the smaller roles of Arminio, we have um, Stephen Chambers. I definitely really love the quality of his voice. It was a light lyric tenor voice that was a great contrast to that of Javier Cortez's more spinto and meaty, dramatic voice. Hearing his light lyric tenor voice, well, Mr. Chambers especially, was absolutely a pleasure to hear. He was able to make such a thankless role into something that was worth listening to and something of pure beauty. He definitely had a beautiful tone he had a very precise and well-focused tone, and plus his stage presence was really, really spot on. He was able to convey um, Arminio's sense of urgency, especially when he's called in by his master, um, Francesco, and Massimiliano, of course. But still, I definitely felt that Chambers did a very wonderful job as Arminio, and in fact, I've actually saw him in the role of one of the Jews from Salome, and hearing him perform the role of Arminio was definitely a huge treat, and I really hope to hear more of him in the near future. And then in the role of the Pastor Mosa, we have Grigori Skarupa, who I also saw as one of the armed men from Magic Flute, which was shown at the Staatsopern Schiller Theater, and also one of the characters in Zalome. I 
really love the quality of his voice as well. Sure, it's still in development because he's still in his mid-twenties, but I'm sure with enough time and with enough practice, he will probably end up doing a lot of the bigger roles in bigger theaters, of course. But still, seeing him in the role of the pastor was definitely a lot of fun. He was able to convey the pastor's dignified and stern nature, and this was a performance that has kept me glued to the edge of my seat because of just how powerful of a figure he makes him to be. And it was definitely a lot of fun watching him in such a small role, but it's very rewarding. I mean, especially when he says, Trema, it was just amazing. It sent, it sent shivers down my spine. That's what I really meant to say. It meant it sent shivers down my spine that I was absolutely speechless. That's just how convincing of a performer Mr. Shkarupa is. And it was definitely a memorable performance that he put. And then in the small, small role of Rola, we have Brazilian tenor Raul Alonso. He had a good voice, but he had a little bit of a shortcoming in terms of how it was produced. It was produced in this nasal type of tone, which I don't really like. But still, he was able to hit his notes perfectly, and he was able to make a good use of such a small role. But even though he had such a nasal tone, I still love his voice in terms of not being wobbly and not being so um, uh, ill-focused. I felt like it was well-focused, but the only problem is it's how it's produced. It was nasally, but I'm sure that if I could give him a lot more time, it would be produced a lot better. And yeah, he was okay. Not the best, not the worst, but just okay. And I thought that the chorus definitely did a great job really adding into the drama of Imastadieri, especially in the first act, uh, Cabaletta and Chorus, with Mr. Cortez. I definitely enjoyed watching the male um, section of the chorus get along in front of the stage and just clasp their hands together and join in the tenor in singing his cavaletta. I definitely enjoyed. This was pretty much the highlight of this semi-staged version of Imas Nadieri. And in terms of the conducting by Mr. Felix Krieger, I definitely enjoyed it. It was brisk. He was able to pay really close attention to detail of how the notes were written. And I definitely loved how he was able to lead that cello solo. That was really, really gorgeous. Well, specifically in the overture. And I definitely felt that he did a great job in um, conducting the orchestra very well. And the chorus was equally well sung. So overall, this was really a great night of fantastic singing and a very fun semi-stage production of this opera and very great conducting by Maestro Felix Krieger. This was just absolutely pure bliss. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune into my next review, which is going to be, well, tomorrow, where I review um, this um, concert that I'll be attending at the Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christus uh, Church in Dalem. Um, it basically stars Hanno Müller Brachmann, who is a very fantastic bass baritone that I've only heard on YouTube, and I hope to really hear him live, and I hope that he'll do magnificently. 
Until then, this is Antoni signing off and wishing you all a good night.